listen. You say you got the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to argue with you. But I need you to help me do something real quick. Just give me about 30 seconds of your time. When I count to three, we going to let the devil know we got the Holy Ghost. And since we got the Holy Ghost, we got the victory. Somebody say victory. Somebody say victory. I want you to dance on your feet. One, two, everybody come on. Thank you for him going away and said, I'm going to send a comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. And he'll comfort you. He'll show you things to come. Oh, yes. Give you power to thread over scorpions, to power to thread over all the works of the enemy. How many know you need power in your life? I, I don't know about you, but I know I need power in my life. Holy Ghost. Ooh. Hallelujah. Lift those hands to heaven in the presence of God because this is 
worship experience that you don't want to leave here without giving God what he deserves for this moment and this time. This moment and this time is the time that you need to give God what he deserves. He deserves, he deserves your praise. He deserves your worship. He deserves all that you have within you. That's why David said, I would bless the Lord at all times. And all that is within me, I would bless his holy name. Because his name is holy. Holy is our God. He's holy. Holy is our God. You have two feet. I need you to stand on just for one moment. Just for one moment. They give God some reverence. Just stand on your feet. Holy is our God. God, we pray the anointing. Let your anointing saturate throughout this worship center. Oh, God, touch every soul. Touch every life. Let your word soak and fall in good soil. Lord, let it bring full fruit. Lord, have your way. Lord, I can't say that enough. Lord, have your way. Not Pastor Harold's way, but your way. Move self out of the way. Let self have no glory. Let no flesh glory in your presence. But move all flesh. Let these lips of mine begin to speak as the very oracles of God. Oh, yes, use me in your service. Draw me near every day. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. You may be seated in the presence of God. But... Oh, 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 hallelujah. How many feel real good? Just wave your hands. Oh, yes, God is so good. It is again that the Lord has allowed us to come to the house of worship. It is again that he's allowed us to be over the air with technology. Those who are watching, we greet you in the name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Those are the seminar here, the minister, Mrs. Cart, and deacons, mothers, and all my wife, and everyone that it takes to make up this congregation. God bless you this morning. God is good. I, I said God is good. Unless we hold you too long, we have been talking and we on a series of messages from the book of Joshua. And we've been talking about being a Joshua generation. In order to be a Joshua generation, we have been bringing out some things that Joshua did and the people that were with Joshua. Two Sundays ago, I, I spoke on how do you get from here to there? And if I'd had, if it was one person today could jump up and just give me three points that I made, you have $50 coming. But since you didn't jump up real quick, as soon as I said it, you, you just forfeited that. You had one second to do it. But, but, but three points I made was, you, first of all, you had to take the challenge. If you're going to be a Joshua generation, God is going to challenge you to do something. And you got to be willing to take the challenge. Secondly, I said that in order for you to move from here to there, you had to have a communication with God. In fact, I said commune with him. Joshua talked to God. Thirdly, 
I said, you had to be in compliance with what his word said. You cannot be out of compliance with his word. How many know you have to operate in the word of God? The word you got to live by every day. You will never hunger it if you eat the word of God when it comes to spirituality because it will feed you. That's why the song old song Sam writes that feed me Jesus feed me until I want no more. But I, I, I can't get enough of the word. I, I'm kind of like old dog. I meditate on it. You know a dog he'll take a bone and he'll gnaw it for a little while go bury it. Go back and dig it up and gnaw it in some more. That's what you have to do with the word of God. Meditate on the word of God day and night and let not these words, he says, leave out of your mouth. Teach them to your children. Stand on the word because the word won't fail you. Everything else will pass away, but the word of God will forever stand. So the Joshua generation, we're in compliance, we're communing, and we are taking the challenge. Somebody shout out, I'm going to take the challenge. See, God got a destiny for you. God got a purpose for you. You got to take the challenge, talk to him, and be in compliance. Then on last Sunday, we talked about even when you do that, you do these three things, you're going to face obstacles. Obstacles are going to be on your way. So, so Pastor Al, what, what do I have to do then? If these obstacles are going to be in my way. I got to recognize the commitment. I got to recognize that God going to be with me. I don't care what I face. I got to, I got to recognize he's going to be there. I got to know for a fact that I'm in compliance. I got the confidence that I need because my impossibilities return to possibilities when I got confidence in God. That's the Joshua generation. Is a people who will have faith to believe. When I can't understand the process, I stand on his promises. I can't see what he's doing, but I know one thing I can stand on is his word. I can have confidence even when the doctor says you're terminally ill, I can have confidence when he said by his stripes I am healed. I'd be like Job who says, though you slay me yet will I trust you. And all the days of my appointed time I will wait on the Lord. I'll wait on him. Somebody child glory. So now that, that leads us down. And when Joshua now has, has won victories, the people of Israel has, has won victories. They, 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 have, they have come across Jordan River when they, they were in compliance. They, they had confidence. They believed what the man of God said. Here they come to Jordan River. They walked, and he said, he did. They did exactly what the priest said do. They stepped in the water. The waters poured it back. They walked across. They put stones. Hallelujah. In the river. And shouted on the other side. But then they faced an obstacle. They got there and they listened to Joshua. They marched around the walls. One time for six days. The priest would blow the trumpet. How many know? You need the trumpet is the word of God. You need to hear the word. I'm blowing the trumpet now because the Bible says in, in the book of uh, Isaiah, he said, cry out, cry out, spare not. Open up your voice like a trumpet. Some people say, I don't believe in preachers hooping, but sometimes you got to open up like a trumpet. Cry out, spare not. In other words, I can't, I can't just because I'm hitting, stepping on your toes, I can't spare you. He said, cry loud, spare not, spare not. I don't care what you've done. If it hurt your toes, just twiggle them a little bit and put them under the bench and keep on going. Say, yes, Lord, that's me. Then that's the way they, they, they've done all of this, but now they get to the point where they are doing all this stuff, but they're getting victory after victory. You know, 
when you win, you got to be careful. When, you, when you're winning, you got to be careful. And I, I've seen folks that win and folks that's on top, they become a little lackadaisical because they're so used to winning. And they go into the next battle with a lack of focus because we got this. We good now. I've seen people who come to church and they get involved and God start blessing them. God start blessing them, moving them, elevating them on their job. They have more money than they ever had. They driving better than they ever had. But they get to the place to where they feel like, I got this. I don't need God anymore. I can handle this. That, that, that's, that's a giant in the lives of people. Do y all, y all, you all hear me real good. There's a giant in the life of people. And it's, the, it's just a part of human nature. There's three big old words, and I want all of them capitalized when you just look at them in your mind. My own way. Think about it. My own way. And when I can't have it my way, I'm upset. I had a little granddaughter there. When she don't have her way, she start pouting. Come on. I'm not doing it your way. I want my way. Uh, I'm not going to act right. See, the giants that most people call in their life, you know why they're in your life? Most of the time, you have tried to do it your own way. I'm a living witness. I, I'm not out of the back with nobody. When you try to do it your own way, you're going to run into problems. And that leads me to my subject. What happens when you fail? As a child of God, what happens when we fail? That's number one, trying to do it our own way. We've been listening to God. We've been doing it God's way. But now we want to do it our own. And when you start doing it your own way, it's a mess. You're going to face setbacks. My own way. Ooh, that's just part of human nature. We want it our way. The reason why marriages don't last. Because if I can have my way, then I just get on the way. Come on. If I can have it my way in church, I leave and go to the next church. If I can have it in my way in the choir, I'm going to sit down. But I'm not singing no more. My own way. is the biggest giant you ever face. It's called I. There's three people that hold you back in life. They call me, myself, and I. That's what holds most of us back, and we pointing at other folks. But if you look at yourself, it's all about me, myself, and I. Then when you get over you, if God delivers you from you, you're going to be all right. I'm so glad God delivered me from me. Because I thought one time, and when I was in, it, it, around 20 years old, the world centered around Hilton Hale. Come on. But the world doesn't center around me. If the sun don't come up, praise God. If I don't get up, the sun's still coming up. If I don't make it to Pleasant Grove, y'all still going to have church. Y'all might sniff and eat some chicken, but you're still going to have church. Ain't God all right? The world doesn't center around me, myself, and I. So many times when God blesses us, we get to the point to where we believe that we got it going on and we don't have to talk to him and commune with him no more. We don't have to talk to him like they were doing before. So what we found here in Joshua chapter 7, verse 1 through 4, is where they messed up. Look what they did. But the children of Israel committed a trespass 
in the accursed thing. For Achan and the sons of Carmel, the sons of Zebedee, and the sons of Zerah of the tribe of Judah took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Now, up until this point, they're moving from here to there, and they're doing everything God said do. But here they take the accursed thing. Look what it said in verse 10 and 12. And Joshua said, and, and the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore lies thou dust upon thy face? Israel had said. Joshua started praying for him, and praying and praying, I can't get you out. I don't care how much I pray when you have took the accursed thing. You can curse yourself. And they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, for they have even taken out their accursed thing and have also stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. <laughs> Ain't God all right? You don't took God's stuff and put it with. I need to talk to you. You're watching me today. You've took God's stuff and put it with your stuff. Whew. This will cause you to fail. You don't know why you're failing and you don't know why it's going on. But you got God's stuff amongst your stuff. You got God's money in your bank account. You got God's money in your bank account, and you ask me to pray for your healing. I'm not talking to nobody here because y'all not like that. Let me talk to y'all that's watching. Ain't nobody doing that here. Everybody here give God what belongs to him. Those who are watching. If you have God's stuff among your stuff and you're looking for a blessing, it will curse you. I don't care what you do, you can't move forward. If you want to get from here to there, you cannot take up the stuff he's told you. So what you're saying, Pastor Hare, my number one point, the curse is here. The curse is here. What is the curse? In verse 11. As we said, you look at verse 11, the curse is here. He said, Israel has sinned and they have also treasured my covenant. I commanded for they have taken a curse thing. It's curse. Joshua 6 and 19 says these words. He says, but all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto. They shall come into the treasury of the. Uh, Y'all don't want to preach with me on this one. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord, and you don't took them and put them in your stuff. It should be in the treasure of the Lord. Ain't God all right? Somebody kind of wave your hand and said, I, I, I'm good. I'll keep preaching. Hallelujah. Joshua 7 and 1. He says these words. He says, but the children of Israel committed a trespass. That's a trespass. When you put that stuff among your stuff, you're cursed. That's a trespass. Ain't God all right? Look at verse 12. Verse 12 said, therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. You can't fight your enemy when you got some baggage. You can't face the devil and win victory when you have baggage in your life that you know that belong to God. You ain't been doing what you're supposed to do for God. How are you going to face the enemy? Oh, I'm facing this mountain. Uh, this is going on in my life. But what is it that you have that causes you not to have confidence when you go against that devil? Ain't God all right? 
Yes, he says, it, but look, at this, look at it again. Therefore, your children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs. You can't face, see, when you know you're doing what you're supposed to do, you can look that devil in the face and tell him, devil, I command you to take your hands off of my children. I command you to get out of my life. I command you to leave me alone. I command you to stop touching my finances. I command you to lose it. I command you to, to, to get away from my job. I command you. You foul devil. You don't have nothing with God's property. I can face you. He said you can speak to that mountain. It'll move. Be cast in the sea of forgetfulness. You can speak to your problems. You can talk to them when you know. And so many people tell me, oh, the devil running me because you turn your back because you're afraid of the devil. I'm not afraid of the devil. The devil's afraid of me. He's not chasing me. I'm chasing him. I'm trying to chase him out of my cone. I'm trying to chase him out of the church. I'm trying to chase him out of your life. I'm trying to chase him from around, from around anything around me. He got to go. How many want the devil to get out? He got to go. I need you to repeat with me right now. That Satan, I need you to go back to the pits of hell. I ain't turning my back to you. I'm facing you. Saul couldn't face him because he wasn't ready to face him. David said, who is this uncircumcised giant? I'll take him on because I got confidence. I know I'll take him on. Yes, yes, that's the curse thing. Because see, see, 1 John 2 and 16 says, see, sometime, folk, for, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. See, there are three things the devil come to you with. See, these folks will come, these folks came, they was going against these people, and three things happened. And I, I, I want to tell you, it's what, it's in Genesis 2, 2, 16 and 17. Genesis 2, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of knowledge, good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. You, you, you shouldn't eat this. But then Eve had the lust of the eyes. <laughs> Come on now. The lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Those are three things the devil gets you with. These are the three things that he got aching with in this battle against Ai. You're going to see it here in a minute. Because the cause is clear. Secondly, the cause is clear, the reason why they failed. The cause is clear. The cause is disobedience. I told you, when you obey God, you commune with God and you obey God, and you have faith, everything will work out. But when you disobey, it doesn't work. Yes, Joshua is saying here, they got overconfident. The people that he was with, in verse 2 and 3, look what it says. They got overconfident. Joshua sent men from Jericho to El, which is beside Beth Haven, on the east side of the Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed it. Look what they said, though. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor that, for they are just a few people. In other words, we don't have to do all this. We ain't got to pray no more. We don't have to go to church every Sunday. We don't have, we don't have, to, we don't have to read our Bible as we used to. God... God been blessing me. I don't have to go to church and do, um, I can miss because God blessing me. See, they were having victory after victory because they were getting from here to there, but now they got over, A, overconfident. See, you can't get overconfident thinking I'm up here. Never get overconfident thinking you got it made. It's a battle every day of your life. Paul said, I beat my body daily to keep it under subjection lest I get exalted above measure because I be thinking it's me. And he said, God sent something to buffet my body so I wouldn't get exalted. So I wouldn't think it's all about me. Ain't God all right? Yes, they said, we don't need that many people no more like last time. We can just go and we can win this one. I got this, God. 
me, myself, and I got this. Joshua, ain't no sense in making these people labor. Ain't no sense in making these people pray like this. Ain't no sense in making them war like this. Them people, that ain't nothing. Let me tell you, you treat every battle as if it's the biggest battle in the world. Every time, I don't care how good things are going in your life, you keep doing the same thing. Don't change what you do. If you've been praising, don't stop praising. As soon as you get a little money in your pocket, don't stop praising God. You get a little money in your pocket, don't stop coming to church. You get a little money in your pocket, don't think you got it made that you don't have to listen to nobody. He can't tell me nothing. Come on. Stay humble. I mean, I know God exalts you. But you, you think you got it made. Here they are. They think they got overconfident. They say, that's the little, little bit of people. We don't take everybody. It don't take all my prayers. It don't take all reading no word. I got this. I got it on my own. It don't sense me calling God like I do every night. But when you get in trouble, you want to call him 24-7. Huh? But when you think you got it made, I don't need to be on the prayer line. Can, can, can I have a witness here? I don't need to sing in the choir. I, I, I got $5 over my bills. I got a little change rattling in my pocket. I don't have to speak to her. I don't need her. I can pay. I'm, I'm independent. I can pay my own bills. I don't need nobody. Let me tell you something. Folks, when you get proud, when you get overconfidence, that enemy is going to make you turn your back and run. In that many days, you're going to find out that you should have been standing before God, saying, God, uh, uh, since I'm up here, I'm afraid. God, please help me stay here. Because I know I didn't put myself up here. Let me tell you, if you see a turtle sitting up on a fence post, he didn't get up there by himself. Because he can't climb up there, folks. Somebody set him up there. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah! Can I get a witness? Can I preach to you today? To the heart and the soul of your spirit to move you to the next level. If you're going to get from here to there, you got to understand. you got to stay with the Lord. You cannot get overconfident. You cannot get to the place where you're overconfident. In Revelation 3 and 7, King says these words because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods I have no need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable see some folks start talking about I got this I done increased I'm blessed I'm this and that he said but you're miserable and don't know it you're wretched because you done left God out of the equation when you move God out of the equation, you're getting ready to fail. He said, and poor and blind and naked. Look what he says in verse 18. He said he's going to do this. In verse 18, in that same chapter, and when he pull it, 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 because you done said this, God going to come so quickly. Hmm? And, and you're going to be messed up. Ain't God all right? He said, I tell you what I want you to do. I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire I, I, I want somebody been through some stuff that know that I am God that why you where you are you look back over your life and you thank him for everything you got I want people to come before me and worship and say I've been through hell and high water I don't care how much I get I'll still praise him I don't care how, what, how many, how, how, what clothes I have, what car I drive, what house I live in, what job I have. I still be praising because I got gold that's been tried in the fire. I praise him. Can I get a witness in here that I praise him? I don't care what's going on, whether you got money or whether you don't have no money, you will still praise him. That clause is clear. They messed up. The clause was clear. Then, you know, that disobedience will mess you up. That's what that's what Adam and Eve done. They disobeyed. See, when you disobey God, you'll mess up. How many know you'll mess up? Joshua 7 and 21 says these words. 
when I, he said, when I saw. What, what we said a few minutes ago, John 2 and 16 said, when I saw. I saw it with my eyes. That's the lust of the eyes. This is what Achan said. I saw it among the spoils, a goodly Babylonish garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. Then I covered it. I saw, I lusted. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, he's lusting after what he, what he saw. He said, I saw it, and then I covered it, and then I took it. <laughs> That's what Eve did. She saw it, she covered it, she took it, and she gave it to Adam. Uh, can I preach in here? You see it with your eyes, you covered it, your flesh wanted it, and you mess up. He said, I saw it. All this she cares are sinful. And I, 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 I just being honest with you, Joshua. I, I had to have it. But ain't God good? But the good thing about this, and I'm going on to a close, and I, I, this is my last point. The good thing about this, a cure is near. A curse is here. <laughs> a call is clear. And a cure is near. How many know a cure is near? I don't care how much you messed up. How many know we got a cure? How many know we got a savior? That even when we mess up, if we fess up, come on now. He said, if you confess your fault, come on somebody. I am just faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. How many know if you just confess? You know the reason why this ship ain't moving? You need to confess I'm Jonah. See, when you disobey like Jonah did, the ship, a storm will come. Ship when they hardly want to go. They was about to sink and Jonah know that God had told him, I need you to go down to Nineveh to preach my word because those people won't do right. I need them to get on the right track. And Jonah said, I ain't going. I'm going to do me. I'm going to do my own way. And my way is I'm going down to Tosh. I'm going down to the shipyard. I'm buying me a ticket. I'm getting on board. And I'm fleeing from the presence of God. How many know you can't run from him? And Lee Whitman said, you can't run and you can't hide. There's no need for you to try. He, I don't know where, I don't know how. You just can't get by. How many know you can't get by? I don't care what you do, you can't run from God. And he is on the ship and disobeyed God out of the wheel, out of the way. There's a storm that arose on that boat. When the storm arose, he was sleeping in the hull of the ship. Somebody came down there. There's an old sleeper down there. Come down there and shook him and woke him up. They said, Jonah said, nah, if y'all throw me overboard, the song, storm has ceased. At least he confessed. Uh, come on, somebody. That, that, that's what I want to tell you. The first thing you got to do is con confess. If, if you want you want a cure for what you messed up at, you got to fess up. Come on, somebody. He confessed, but he got thrown overboard. He had to go through something now. Now, when you mess up, now you're going through something. But he threw him overboard, and God had prepared a fish just for Jonah. How many know in your messed up situation, he got something prepared just for you? But since you're his child, you, you're going to have to go the long way around, but you're going to get there when you confess. You may go through some stuff, but if you, if you get on your knees and you start calling on Jesus, how, how many know he'll bring you out? Can you imagine him down 
for three days in the belly of a fish down in the bottom of the sea. But the Bible says he prayed down there. Let me tell you, a cure is near. When you mess up, all you got to do is, somebody say, if you call on the Lord, how many know he will answer prayer? I don't know what y'all, you've been through. I don't know what you and your family, whatever about it. Let me tell you, if you call on the Lord, he will. He answered prayer. We all made mistakes. We've all come short. But if you call on the Lord, he will answer your prayer. You call him out of pure heart. You know that I, 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 I confessed to him that, yes, I've done wrong, God. And guess what? He'll hear your prayer because he's a loving God. He loves you in spite of whatever you've done. He still loves you. Yes, he loves you. But there is correction. <laughs> that's that's going to be correction. That's a confession. That's a correction. That God corrected him, put him in that fish. When Achan did this, and, 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 and you, you look at it in verse 19, 20 through 25 in Joshua, Achan did this, but then and Joshua said unto Achan, my son, my son, Listen, he didn't throw him away. Huh? The, the pastor didn't throw him away. When you do something wrong, we, we're not going to He said, my son, I pray thee. I, I pray thee. I pray thee. Glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession unto him. And tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. Don't hide it from me. Just tell me what you've done. You don't have to tell me what you've done. All you got to do is tell Jesus now. See, that day in the time, there, there, there was no mercy and grace. He had, he had to pay for his sins right then and there because Jesus hadn't came. So Joshua had to tell him, you got to tell me what you've done because we can't move forward till we get rid of this sin. Oh, yeah, I don't want to hear me. He said, I pray thee, tell me what you've done. Look what he said. Tell me what you've done. And Achan answered Joshua. This is what Achan, Achan answered Joshua and said, I indeed. I throw my hands up. I indeed have sin. Oh. How many know this is the first step to recover in your life? To admit that you messed up. I've sinned against the Lord God of Israel and thus have I done. We read this before in verse 21. We already read it. But he said, when I saw it, I took it, and we, we'll talk about that. I took it and all that. But look at verse 22. So Joshua sent messages, and they ran unto the tent. And behold, it was hid in the tent. He had took that stuff and put it among his stuff and hid it in the tent. Covered it up. Had God's stuff among his stuff. Because when he said, when you go into here and y'all fight the battle, you win. Don't you take none of that stuff. But he took it. And he put it with his stuff. And he thought everything was all right. But all of a sudden, they lost the battle. And when they lost the battle, something, what happened here? We've been winning. What caused us to lose? Since you've been winning, since you've been having victory in your life, what causes you to lose? You got to find the root of the problem and stamp it out. Somebody shout glory in this place. Go back and look at verse 21 and, and go on down in there so you can really get it clear of what he said. When I saw him on the spot, as good as stuff, and this and 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 a and verse that therefore the when I saw it among the spars and God, I took it, and behold, let me go on down, and they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. And look at verse 22, and he says, so Joshua sent message, and they ran into the tent, and behold, it was hid in the tent. And look at verse 23. And they took him out of the midst of the tent. Let me tell you what you got to do. That's correction. They took him out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. Young men know you got to put your stuff before the Lord. You ain't got to put it before me. You ain't got to go to nobody else. You, what you have messed up at, just put it before the Lord. Whatever going on in your life, if you in, your, in the middle out of the night or in your home, put it before the Lord. Say, Lord, this is what's been going on, and I give it to you. They put it before the Lord, and look what, well, look what they did to him. 
and Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan and the son of Zerah and the silver and the garment and all this stuff and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had and he brought them unto the valley of Achor and they got him out there and they stoned him to death. Let me tell you what you got to do. You got to kill that devil out of your life. That seemed harsh, don't it? But guess what? Jesus did that for us. God let his own son get stoned just for you and I, for all of our mistakes. We don't, have, we don't get done like that no more. We don't get stoned for what we messed up. His grace and his mercy is here right now for you and I, and we don't have to get stoned because of a mess up. He loves you. Somebody shout, he loves you. And all your correction you need now is, Lord, I confess that I messed up and this ship won't move because I'm holding it back. The reason why you can't get to where you get to, if you can't get from here to there, sometimes we got to get to the point to what we just confess. There is something on board that's holding it back. Ain't God all right? Yes. Just kind of wave your hand and tell him thank you. But see, on next Sunday, we'll talk about how you recover when you done lost some stuff. How you get it back. How, how you come back when you're down. Amen. You, you can come back. Even when you mess up, you can come back. You start a game. You may be down 20, 30 points. But if you hang on in there, if you weather the storm, how, how many know you can come back and win? Kind of wave your hand and say you can come back and win. I stop by to tell, ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? I stop by to tell that the God I serve, he's able, he's able, even when we mess up, he's able to fix things and make everything all right. Ain't God all right? Oh, Lord. I, 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 I want you to know, but when you don't turn it over to God, how many know he can't fix it for you? Well, Pastor Hal, how do you know? Mm -hmm. I know because I read in uh, 1 Samuel 15, uh, 1 through 35, Oh Lord, saw was uh, the, the king of Israel, but uh, my brothers and sisters saw uh, he was winning all the battles. Great God, he was winning battle after battle. Saul had uh, his army; he had it all together. Oh, brother Redfield, every time. He saw a young man that had uh, some heart and guts. Saw what put him on the front line of his army. Well, and saw was still winning. Ain't God all right? But oh, one day, oh, great Samuel told him, oh, Saul, I, I need you. God said, Go down to the Amalekites, God. Because uh, the Amalekites, uh, they were mean to Israel when they were trying to get from uh, here to there. They were mean to the children of Israel. I want you to go down. Uh, I want you to slay all of the Amalekites. Uh, not only slay them, uh, but uh, kill all the animals. Uh, and, uh, don't take nothing uh, but destroy everything. Destroy the king. Oh, no. Saul took his army and went down there. When he got down there, he walled against him. But uh, after a while, he was winning the battle. 
The first thing he did, uh, he told the Keites uh, to leave because the Keites, uh, they were friendly to the children of God. How many know when you treat a child of God right, God ain't got nothing against you. Uh, ain't God all right? So the Keites left from the Malachite because uh, Saul said, uh, we ain't going to mess with you all, but we're going to kill all the Malachites. Uh, but uh, when they got there, I heard a saw say, keep the king alive, let him stay alive. And uh, take some, and some of the people said, uh, take some of the cattle and take some of the gold with us. Oh, Lord, on his way back, he came back acting like uh, everything was all right. Uh, oh! Oh, that night, uh, Samuel couldn't sleep. Uh, God came to Samuel that night. So, oh, Samuel uh, saw it and messed up. Uh, saw it and done something wrong. Uh, so, uh, Samuel prayed, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, all night long. Samuel prayed uh, as he prayed. Uh, Lord, the Bible say he cried as he prayed. Oh, oh, that moment he got up, he went out to meet Saul. As he met Saul, when he met Saul, he said, Oh, Saul, did you do what God said do? You know what Saul did. Saul didn't confess her. He tried to lie his way out. He said, I've done all that the law had said do. Ain't God all right? I killed all the Malachites. I took everything they had. And then Samuel, with tears in his eyes, looked at Saul and said, Saul, what is this that I hear lowing in my ear? I hear some cows. I ain't God all right. Oh, Saul said, well, Samuel, the people said, well, they needed those cows. The people said they needed some of that silver and gold. Ain't God all right? I stopped by to tell you if you operate on what the people said, you're going to mess yourself up. You got to do what God said do. You got to obey God. He said the people needed these cows. The people needed some silver and gold. But what you don't realize, all the people don't need gold. to do what God say do and when you do what God say do how many know he'll make it all right he said I own the cattle on a thousand hills I own the silver and gold what nothing made without my hand ain't God all right did anybody here know he's all right Saul, Samuel says, Saul, I got to tell you, you done messed up, you done disobeyed God, but Saul, he said to Saul, obedience is better than sacrifice, you sacrifice for some folks, but you didn't obey God, then Saul, grabbed uh, his mantle uh, he told told his mantle uh, which was Samuel's coat uh, and time to turn around uh, said you done told my mantle uh, you just told down your kingdom uh, you won't be king no more you won't be in charge no more you disobey God uh, somebody say yeah Somebody say yeah, somebody say yeah, somebody ought to 
say if you're gonna go forward, you gotta obey God. Hey, you wanna obey him? Lift your hands and tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. What happens when you fail? Tell the Lord, I fail. I need you. Tell the Lord, thank you. Tell the Lord, thank you. Lift your hands all over the sanctuary. Where you are, lift your hands. What happens when we fail? Possibility, there's a curse meal. Possibility. The cause was clear. But the one thing about it, the cure is near. He's near you right now. Whatever's went wrong in your life, he's near you. He's close to you. He's just a breath away. He's near you. He's here today. He's here today. Lift those hands to him. Thank you. out of your life right now in the name of Jesus there's some things that's been hindering somebody we're turning it over to Jesus right now you won't be hindered anymore you've been losing battles because of the fact that there's something there that among your stuff do you have your worship do you have his worship among your stuff? Do you have idols? Are you worshiping children more than you worship God? What you care about more than you care about God? That's putting his stuff among your stuff. Sometimes we live this life and we think an idol is some beat, some golden image, but idols is anything you make above God. You can't put your family above God. He has to come first in your life. When you put that among your stuff, you're not doing what God wants you to do. You're holding back. Are you putting time among your stuff? I ain't got time to work at the church. Because I had to do this and I had to do that. That means you're putting that among your stuff. You got to take that from among your stuff. And give God what belongs to him. His time. His worship. His money. His witnesses. I don't have time to witness nobody. Come on. You're hiding it among your stuff. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to heaven and tell him thank you.